Okay, here's our new scenario. You're going to start up here on the International Space Station, which I have drawn badly. You can kind of see some solar panels. You're going to jump off it. You're going to plummet down towards the Earth. You're going to line up. You're going to go straight through the hole. You're going to go shooting out the other side. Very sadly, we cannot work this out with our first method from before. We can't use simple harmonic motion because this is not a simple harmonic motion system. For a start, this initial falling bit, your force now equals, well, it's negative gravity times m, m over that complete distance all the way up to their x squared. We haven't got the bit before where we had to work out the smaller changing sphere, which is what cancelled out this and gave us an x next to it. That's what turned it linear. If we're not inside the Earth, it's not linear. It's over that distance squared, which is no longer simple harmonic motion. And when you hit the Earth, that's not much better because now, instead of starting at zero and then being bouncing backwards and forwards in theory, you're hitting it at speed. Speed. We can't use simple harmonic motion to work this out. Realistically, if you wanted to work it out, you would put the ISS up, up here with its solar panels and everything else, and that distance, that bonus distance there is another 400 kilometers. You've already got this distance here of 6,371 kilometers and then you just write an extra bit of your program to do all the little individual increments on the way down here using the acceleration of all of the earth at the given distance and then when you hit here you'd switch to the routine we wrote before but now you've got to factor in that you're already hitting it at quite some speed and you can work it all the way down to there and then you double it and you get your answer out the other side but where's the fun in that? The fun is in doing it with integration. So we've got our force already. We can convert that into the acceleration simply by taking off the mass. So that's going to be negative G big M on X squared. I'm going to call that A1. That's the acceleration for this part of the fall. And then in here, you're going to have A2. And A2 equals the one that we had uh, previously. And don't be fooled, these are both functions of x. So you've got acceleration 1 function of x, acceleration 2 function of x. You need to integrate across this bit here, get some values out the other side, and then you use those as your starting and stopping your bounds when you're doing the integration for the second section. And you can actually go through and work that all out. I'm not going to do it for you now. This is a completely different beast when it comes to going through the integration. The bit at the end is a lot nicer than the tan function. You get much more set values out of that without any trigonomic messing around. So, so have a play with that, it's kind of fun. If you just want the answers, my working out, I got the fall takes 300.3 seconds. So you've got pretty much exactly five minutes of plummeting through no atmosphere until you hit the beginning of your hole. And when you hit that, you're going to be going approximately 2,718.7 meters per second. You then go into the second phase of the fall down towards the middle. When you hit the middle, you cap out at a maximum velocity of 8,000. 363.7 meters per second, which is phenomenal. If you compare that to the International Space Station, it's going slower. It's going slow. Work it out. you got the equations. And when you come all the way racing out the other side, your total time to go all the way from the ISS down through the Earth, back out the other side, back up, catch the ISS, is 2,000... 597.8 seconds compared to the half orbit time of the ISS is 2,772.5 seconds. That is a difference of almost three minutes. That is at, well, two minutes, 54.7 seconds. You, in fact, you will get there before the ISS. So if you're on the International Space Station and you jump off it and you go plummeting down, you come shooting up the other side, you will get here a full three minutes early. And sadly, you can't wait because you will then, unless you brought some kind of boosters with you, and it wouldn't take much to keep you still, to be honest. But no, actually, it would take a lot. Anyway, so if you then got there, you'd go plummeting back 
down again uh, as you came out. But because of the speed the ISS goes, it would still be 1.3 million meters. It would be over a mega meter back in its orbit before getting to you. So, so there's your last bit of practical mathematics. Don't try this. Well, no, well try, try the maths and, and try the Great Courses Plus, but don't, don't try jumping off the ISS. There are a number of serious problems. Atmosphere, for a start.